What's going on guys? This is Mia Sin and welcome to the OCG metagame breakdown number 6 and 7. This one is an absolute bomb. I think you can already see on the pie chart that, uh, <laughs> yeah, the tier 0 format is uh, far from over, not even remotely close. Uh, imagine, uh, you know, hitting almost all of the Ishizu cards and, uh, you know, the deck still being the best deck by a long shot. So today we will try to understand why and how, but of course you already know it before this video starts, make sure you like and subscribe. Check me out on Twitch and Instagram, all the beautiful fun stuff. And now let's get right into it. So of course, big shout outs to Akira, it's your boy for always providing these beautiful articles. And this report is about 64 top performing decks. It's always like the decks that are doing well, not just like any deck that people are playing. So this is relatively, you know, good uh, sample size in a way from 12 tournaments during the span of uh, a little more than a week. And I have no idea what Selection 5 is, but it's probably like just one promo card or something garbage. It's not like a new set or anything. So the the first, <laughs> the, the best deck is Trillamance again by a long shot. 65.6% representation. 656. My name is Yasin656. What a coincidence. <laughs> uh, 28 of them are with just Kashtira. And then 13 are with Ishizu and Kashtira. And one is with Ra Ishizu Trillamance. Alright, yeah, so... I don't know if this is like sphere mode so that you can search it or if this is like Ross Disciple. I, I don't think so though. Yeah, this is probably like a Ross Sphere mode main deck. And yeah, because there's like a new card that can search it, but it, it's, it still doesn't make it like really good. Uh, <laughs> this is actually hilarious, by the way. We're going to be like coming back to that very soon. Now, 65.6 is a little more than what we had before. So this was the past breakdown, 63.9, but the sample size was bigger. And the breakdown before that was even lower, 51.9. But the sample size was 52 decks uh, in only two days. So it's kind of irrelevant. But this is like a, a little bit of a mid middle ground. Like bigger, bigger sample size than the first one. But still smaller than the second one. And obviously 65.6% is absolutely gigantic. And another thing that I will want to say is that even though not everyone is stopping with uh, Tier Laments, everyone is winning with Tier Laments. And that is the big difference between like uh, let's say a Tier 0 or a Tier 1 deck whatever. Uh, sometimes people look at just percentage-wise and they go, oh, well, you know, Tier Laments is not a Tier 0 deck because according to the definition of the insert random stupid non-official website here, <laughs> and it, it, it should be tier, uh, tier 0 should be 70 or 80%. Not really, because 100% of the decks that are winning are with Tier Laments. So that's the reason why it's a true Tier 0 deck. It's not about, uh, what you know, how much it's stopping. But anyways, after that, we have Kashtira, which is only at 6.3%. Now, that's actually really bad. It used to be way above that. It used to be 17 out of, uh, what, what's that, 107? So yeah, 15.7%. And even the, uh, before, it was also pretty good. But now it's just like the same thing as like everyone else. So like Labyrinth, I can't believe that Labyrinth and Kashtira are pretty much like the same thing now. And the reason for that, well, the reason why Labyrinth is so good is because if it goes first, it can really punish Tier Laments like big time with like Necro Valley and stuff because you don't care too much about your graveyard and you can turbo out like very dangerous trap cards with a Lady uh, of the Labyrinth, whatever, like the new level 8 monster that's like ridiculously good. I made a video on that, but I could actually make like a full in-depth video on like how Labyrinth is like a very good top uh, top deck performer, a top deck contender for like next format potentially, depending on if we have a ban list or not. But yeah, it doesn't care about the graveyard, so even the Shizu cards do nothing. But the Shizu cards are no longer our main concern anymore. Things have changed, yes sir. Anyways, a uh, lawn mowing at Emancipator, Runic. One of them is like the Runic deck out, like Card of Demise. Zero monsters in the main deck and no Mystic Mind because it's banned. So uh, our version of Runic is completely different than the TCG. As uh, some people would be playing like maybe Sphere Mode in the main deck, Rivalry, Dark Bribe, Solemn Judgment, Mystic Mind, etc. And people are not really playing Runic Fountain in that version. Except if they're playing the, like, the Majesty's Fiend version, then it's completely different. But I was referring to um, the deck that uh, I think uh, Lars was playing in the YCS Dortmund. Anyways, Invoke Runic is very interesting. It looks really cute. Splite Shot Brigade, it's a decent deck. I like it. Branded Bisted, Branded Dragon Maid. Sorry, Bisted Dragon, uh, Dragon Maid. Bisted Dragon Link, this is uh, pretty nice. Is in the TCG as well. Lan Moing, Kashtira, Tier Lament, Shadal. Lan Moing, Tier Lament, Branded Bisted, Despia. Very interesting deck. I think this is the kind of deck that the TCG players would actually love to experiment with if we had Lan Moing, but we don't. Uh, although some people are still playing 60 card decks, even without Lawn Moing, so that's actually really crazy. Uh, Kashtira, Scareclaw, Punk, Junk, Doppel, uh, Sprite, Gishki, I actually have a decklist for that, but 
it's not very interesting and it's not going to be good in the TCG. I really don't think so. Maybe, but eh, I think people are just playing this for fun, but it's not doing like super well. And finally, Zephyrel, which only exists in the OCG, not in the TCG. All right, get ready to laugh. So Gen Gen wait, went 8-1 and one and finished first in a 72 to tournament. So not too bad. Player tournament, Jesus. Uh, trailer men's builds are slowly shifting away from Kaldo, the Sacred Protector, and Mudora, the Sword Article. The Shizu monsters are advantages in the mirror match when get your uh, when you get your engine going and they're sent from the deck um, and when they're sent from the deck to the grave. But more often than not, uh, bear with me here. The Shizu cards are bricks when drawn. <laughs> Imagine in 2022 saying that what made a deck tier zero are now bricks when you draw them. Like yeah, sure they're good when you mail them, but like you don't want to draw them. Like, that's just hilarious because some people in the TCG are playing 12 of the Ishizu cards. And those guys, they have the option of playing like 6 if they want to or maybe more. Uh, they can play like triple Mudora, I believe. Triple Kelbeck or one Kelbeck, triple Agito, whatever the other one. And then, you know, one Kaldo. And they're still not doing that. They're still only playing 2 to... Well, 0 to 2 to, uh, Ishizu monsters. That's incredible, man. Because when you think about it, if you're not playing like Kelbeck and Agito... The Keldo is just not really doing much, honestly. Like, you're pretty much searching nothing, and on top of that, it, you, you'll never be able to, like, special summon them, like, at all. So, yeah, why play those cards now? It's like, the Kashtira cards are just so much better that there's just really no reason. And, yeah, when I think about it, the Kashtira cards are objectively, like, the, the biggest power creep uh, archetype that we're going to be getting in a while, because they're very splashable. A lot of decks can probably play, you know, Fenrir and Kesh well, not Kashtira, Terra Laments, obviously, but uh, the Skirklaw, uh, Kashtira is playable in Skirklaw and in the pure Kashtira deck. And, of course, uh, you know, every other card that uh, you can play. So, this is just ridiculous. People are main decking Reaper, like, what the heck? This format is gonna be nasty like some people were complaining about this one my man you haven't seen anything like anything this is this is madness <laughs> oh my god this is gonna be a tier negative one format oh my tier zero yeah good one haha <laughs> kek w anyways running set rotation in the main deck is actually gaining in popularity the reason for that is because you're gonna give yourself the uh, primal planet pearl arena which is a one of and you're gonna give your opponent the prime planet uh, parezos so it's that one, the one that searches the uh, Kashtira cards. And because of the fact that your opponent now has a card in the Spell and Jab Zone or Field Zone or whatever, Imperm is now useless. So that's the reason why people are no longer playing three Imperms. And, uh, you know, you're not really trying to let your opponent get a free plus one. So you're trying to pop that card either with the effect of the Field Spell, the Pearl Arena, that you're getting, or the Baron, or the Draco Sack. So it does make sense. And also, it would be an out to Mystic Mine at the TCG. So I think a lot of people will be playing set rotation when we'll get to that new Field Spell. Uh, which is very interesting. And exactly as I said, set rotation is as another side benefit of being able to clear the, the opponent's Necro Valley. So yeah, Necro Valley, and for us, T uh, Mystic Mine as well, Labyrinth is using Metaverse for quick access to Necro Valley to seal Tier Laments Monsters Graveyard Effects. That is very, very terrifying. Now, what interests me about this deck is that it shifted away from being like a, a little more combo heavy to like being very mid-rangey. So a lot of hand shops, uh, Triple Reaper, tr Double Ash, Double... Uh, the, um, you know, Ghost Mourner, this card is, like, different in the OCG than it is in the TCG, I believe. I don't know if this is, like, treated as a quick effect or a trigger effect, but either way, in the, the TCG, it's a trigger effect. So if your opponent goes, like, Tri Brigade Revolt to summon Amin on your own turn, you can't go, like, Mourner to negate. You can go Mourner, but it's gonna be a Chain Link 1, and the Amin is gonna be a Chain Link 2, because Mourner is a trigger effect here, and that would mean that you have to use your trigger effects uh, before your opponent, since you are the turn player, so that really makes no sense. But in the OCG, I don't believe it's that way. And also, if your opponent is summoning like Drago Stapelli on your own turn, you can negate that and you can do some nice things. So this card is pretty cool. And then one Imperm, whatever. So three, five, seven, ten, eleven hand shops. And then, of course, we have the double Hoffiness and the Keshtir at your laments, which is technically like another copy of Hoffiness. But a little more neggy because after you summon it, you have to banish a Kashtira or Tealaments card from your hand or graveyard, which I'm really not a big fan of. And I finally understand why people are all main decking one copy of Meta Noise. It's because of the fact that if your opponent is playing Kashtira cards, your opponent goes like special summon the Fenbeer, and then you just go like Book of Moon, and you can just win from there. Because negating an effect is like, it's cool and all, but basically a Book of Moon would pretty much negate the effect since, you know, it won't be able to trigger. And on top of that, uh, you can't really use it as a rank 7 material. So Meta Noise is a much better turn skipper than a card like Solik would be. Uh, so that's definitely something to consider. And people are no longer playing like Crime and Heartbeats in the main deck. 
rather in the side deck triple ta tactic uh, tasking as well in the side deck always just as a one of same thing with triple tactic talents you know like they're cool to draw but like you don't really care that much about drawing them one funny thing is that again everybody and their mother is playing asa in the ocg whereas nobody at all is doing that in the tcg because if the asa dies you can't search anything and in the ocg you can search max c it's a low defense earth monster you can't search fenrir because it has 2400 defense big booty and one thing that really uh, caught my attention is that this time uh, people are only playing one Kaleido Heart. And the last breakdown, people are playing two Kaleido Heart, and I didn't really understand why. And I realized very soon enough that it was because of that card. Um, Diabolos is the mind hacker. It can look at the opponent's extra deck and make you lose one card. So if you're only playing one Kid Kalos or one Kaleido Heart, you're going to have a very, very tough time against that deck. But with uh, two Kaleido Heart, that is mitigated. Now, this guy really wanted as many options as possible, and he didn't really care too much about Diabolos, or Diabloses, sorry. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're really only expecting mirror matches, it makes sense. No Baguska, very shocking. And then, of course, the Zeus, Draco, Sacred, Doer, Dweller, uh, you know, Baron, etc. I do understand, I guess, not uh, playing uh, Baguska because there's no more Ishizu cards, so it makes sense. And the last breakdown, I believe... No, never mind, Baguska was also not there... And it wasn't that build, actually. The one with uh, triple uh, Ishizu monsters. But that one without the Ishizu monsters didn't have Baguska. So my prediction was indeed correct. And again, I kept saying that, but uh, cards that can actually allow you to steal monsters are just always really good. So like Mind Control. Another thing that we've seen before, so Mind Control here. And uh, obviously, we're going to have like Change of Heart and stuff. So yeah, more Mind Controls. More Mind Controls. Everyone is playing Mind Control. The card is really that good. Because if you can steal your opponent like a Rise Heart or Shangri-La... You can make your own Arise Heart or like whatever. So really nice. And then two more Imperms in the side deck. Uh, because again, people are kind of scared of, um, you know, set rotation, whatever else. This is the thing in the OCG. They're trying to cover like as much ground as possible. Whereas in the TCG, people are just like way more aggressive, especially in North America. In Europe, I know that people are more conservative, but whatever. Anyways, Iruka. Wait, hold on. Iruka is a... Uh... N the, 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 you know, the, yeah, it's the guy Naruto, what the heck? Went 6 one, one and <laughs> finished first in Lotus Festival, uh, which had 40 teams, 120 players. Um, okay, so this is a build of Kashtira Tier Elements, but this time featuring Unicorn, which is very spicy because it allows you to make the, uh, the Arise Heart. Now, he's also not playing that. <laughs> Anyways, he ran one Kashtira Unicorn and one Birth in the main deck. If Fenrir is already in hand, Unicorn is another option to add from deck to hand with Perezos. After a special summoning Unicorn, you search Birth and then you are uh, you can normal summon the uh, Fenrir without uh, the Tribute summoning. So that's actually very interesting. And uh, when you're going first and you get like hand trapped, the Unicorn can make you look at your opponent's extra deck and make him lose a card. So it's not just Diablosis, but it's also, you know, the Unicorn as well. Another good reason to play uh, two Kaleido Heart or something. So being able to make your opponent lose the one of Kid Kalos as well if they're only playing one is massive. Yeah, Kashtira Birth could also be used to special summon Kashtira, a uh, Tier Laments Kashtira from the grave, which would trigger its effect to mail yourself three cards. So you can actually get your Tier Laments engine started using only Kashtira cards. That is actually very interesting. And during the opponent's turn, Kashtira Birth is a direct counter to the opponent's Tier Laments Scream. After the opponent's Tier Laments Scream effect resolves and send the top three cards from the deck to the grave, Kashtira Birth effect to banish face down cards from the opponent's graveyard can be activated a new chain. Uh, so the reason for that is because they go like chain link one and then you go like chain link two on resolution. So even if they mail like cards whatever you just can, you can just like banish everything after so that's actually really nasty if the opponent sent any tier laments monster to the grave then as the turn player their tier laments trigger effect would have to go onto the chain first that's exactly what i said i swear to god i didn't even like read this text before i just like i just knew that it had to be that because you know being the turn player uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh sometimes can be a blessing but sometimes can be a curse um, you know, a good moment where being a turn player is a very good thing would be to use cards like Super Poly uh, where your opponent can't respond. So if, let's say, you're like a, on your... You're going second, it's your turn, your opponent has Dweller and Lulu Karos. Because of the fact that on draw phase, you have turn player priority, you can use the Super Poly before your opponent uses Dweller. Now, this is the one, uh, you know, positive thing. The negative thing would be in the situation that I just explained with Ghost Mourner, where you actually want to use your Mourner after the opponent, but unfortunately... Because of the fact that you're a turn player, you have to use it before. Which means that it resolves after. It's very tricky, but if you understand, like, basic Yugi rules, it should be... Well, basic. N more or less basic. <laughs> Anyways, after that, Kishtira Birth could be, uh, you know, added to the chain. Resolving the chain, Kishtira Birth effect would resolve first and banish phase down. Those three elements, monsters from the grave, and halting the fusion summon. So definitely very freaking cool. 
And yeah, another good reason, I guess, to play Birth. And Unicorn, being able to snipe a card from the extra deck is definitely appreciated. This list is on Double Scream. This one is also on Double Scream. I think most people are always on Double Scream, so like another version. Yeah, everyone and their mother is playing Double Scream. Very interesting. And again, no crime in the main deck. Wow. In the side deck, there is no more reason to play Bistit Saronier because this new Bistit monster is objectively better. If your opponent summons a Fusion Synchro Xyz or Link, whatever monster, and you control another Light or Dark, you can tribute it and then banish that monster. So this is like a double interruption in case you have like another Bistit monster like on turn 0. Or if you're like on turn 1 or whatever, well, turn 2 rather, uh, you can use like the other monsters that you've summoned on turn 1. So very nice card. I'm a huge uh, fan of this card. But it's only play played as a one of because majority of the time, if you're going second, it's not going to be able to like trigger that other effect unless you're playing a bunch of other Bisted Monsters. Now, in conjunction with Druid Worm, this card could be like a triple or quadruple interruption because you can also trigger the effect of Druid Worm to send yet another monster your opponent controls to the graveyard. So very, very cool. And again, I keep m mentioning the same thing. Book of Eclipse, Mind Control, all those cards definitely have to be on the lookout for them because they will be played a lot in next format. Yeah, in conclusion, Tyrolemance remains in the dominant lead. Kashtira has fallen off greatly and has roughly the same amount of tops as Labyrinth. Again, another thing that I said. And people are back to attacking against Kashtira Tyrolemance, such as moving Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries into the main deck and running multiple Bistin Monsters in the side deck. So that is something that we have seen, especially in this deck list, with, you know, uh, five Bistin Monsters here. Well, no Reaper here, uh, although I will say... And this one was on zero Bistids, but three Reaper main deck. And I also want to show you guys some other deck lists because I, I was able to find some uh, pretty interesting uh, stuff. So this one is a build with King of the Swamp, Polymerization, and the Graph of Fusion with Guardian Chimera. So one thing that I will have to say is that in the remote dual YCS that we will be getting early December next month, we will have, you know, the Graph uh, Fusion because we'll be getting the Dark World Structure deck, which means that this build of Tier Laments will be playable. And if you want to catch people off guard, this is definitely your opportunity to do so. So definitely don't sleep on that, um, you know, play. That is really nice. And another thing would be this version of Kashtira. Another extremely interesting build. I really don't understand what it's trying to achieve. Uh, really, I mean, it, it's only on Triple Fenrir, Triple Unicorn, one Planet Pathfinder, one Wind Bear statue. It just looks like kind of awkward. I believe this is the Scare Claw. Uh, Kashtira, only two Rise Hearts, uh, two Shifter because it's semi-limited. So yeah, I mean, this is very, very unique. Swords of Concealing Light instead of Book of Eclipse. Of course, very nice to break the board going second. Everything is like, you know, you can protect yourself from Regeki with the Shangri-La, but you can't protect yourself from Swords of Concealing Light and Book of Eclipse. Book of Eclipse, I guess you can Ash it. So that's a good reason to play Ash, but whatever. Main deck evenly as well. I think this is going to be like the new Flunderies, where people just play a lot of going second cards in a going first deck. And, you know, if they go first, then they, they just do their thing because they only need, like, one or two cards to play. And if they're going second, well, again, they only need to one to two cards to play. And they have a bunch of going second cards, so it's all good in the hood. So definitely a very interesting deck to take into consideration. And finally, the third and final deck list that I want to show you guys was this one. Very interesting. Again, Triple Rain... Uh, obviously, well, I mean, it's maxing out on the Tier Lamans because Hoffiness is a two. So there's no reason to, for me to, like, say, oh, three of this, three of this, way, whatever. Uh, Gildagra, the main deck with King of the Swamp. Again, Triple Polymerization. Wow. And no Grafa Fusion, but playing Guardian Chimera. So also very nice. And then Double Desires, Double Lawn Mowing. <laughs> this is really nasty. Yeah, I mean, th this deck looks extremely fun to play, and I know for a fact that people would absolutely enjoy playing this deck in the TCG, but yeah, again, we don't have this card, man. Give us back lawn mowing, <laughs> or not. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Really appreciate you guys, and I'll see you very soon. Peace.